So while I've been messing around with Gluster, I came to a point where I was needing to dynamically provision Gluster storage while not being on a Gluster storage node. And I didn't know if there was an API out there for it or what. It turns out there isn't natively, but there's a project out there called Hecketi that puts a REST API on top of Gluster. And so um, I'm going to be demonstrating how to set that up in a standalone mode in this uh, video demonstration and hopefully um, get to where I'm sh showing how you can integrate it into Kubernetes and OpenShift later for uh, the dynamic provisioning in, in those projects. So what I have here are uh, two cluster server nodes, and then this is going to be the client. And I'm going to install the Hecate server and CLI tools here, and we'll see how we can dynamically provision cluster storage uh, off node using the CLI tools and then mount it locally on our client here. So the first thing we're going to do is install clusterfs server on these two nodes. Now I had a previous video where it showed how to set up your Gluster server, your Gluster cluster manually. And you had to create the partitions and the block storage and the, and the brick directory and all that kind of stuff. So Hecate, it actually will SSH, the server SSHs into the nodes and executes these commands on your behalf to create the brick storage and things like that out of an LVM pool that it creates. So it's a little different, um, and actually, you don't, that's all you need to do to set up the nodes is to install Gluster and then um, enab enable it. So uh, from here, we're going to come over to the client, and we're going to install the Hecate server, which... <laughs> There's a package in the repository for it, so you just pull it in. And there, the first thing we're going to do, and, and this is something that you'll figure out that you need to do later, but I, I've already done it, so I know that this is a step that you got to do. Um, as the Hecate user, run SSH keygen. This is it's going to need to have an SSH key installed on each of the cluster nodes to create the to SSH in and create the brick storage. So we're going to go ahead and create that uh, pre-shared key now. And you can see here, note this path. Uh, we're going to need this in the configuration file. I'm actually going to copy it here, so don't fat finger it later. And so we've got our SSH key. Now we need to go into the Hecate, um configuration. It's a JSON file here. And give it a little more room. So here we've got the, the executor. So by default, it's got the mock executor uh, Execute plugin enabled, which doesn't do anything. Uh, the other two are SSH and Kubernetes. Since this is a standalone, we're going to use SSH. And when you use SSH, you have to fill in the SSH exec section here. So this is that key file that we just, the pre shared key that we just generated. You want to do the private one. And we're going to, the user that you log into the Gluster nodes as, which is going to be root. And I'm not saying that this setup is secure, by the way. Um, you probably want to do this uh, with a less privileged user, but for the demonstration, this is the easiest way to go. And then it will <clears throat> it will insert into the FS tab any brick storage that it creates, so it needs to know where it is for your particular system. So after that is all set up, we can save that, and we can start the uh, server, we can make sure that, that is running, it is, and if I expand this out, you can see that it's listening on port 8080, and so if we do a uh, curl on that port, and there's a, <laughs> there's a test endpoint that the server exposes called hello, then you can get hello from Hecate. So, um, once we do that, we need to take this pre-shared key and install it on the nodes. So that is in, I've got it in the clipboard here. Oh, there's another one. Okay. So we're going to get our public key. We got that here. We're going to come in here and under the roots authorized keys, 
we're going to take this key and put it in here. And same thing on node two. Um, so you can, uh, you can test this out, I think. Pseudo, let's give this a try. I didn't, I didn't try this in the script, but we'll see. Hey, Keddy, and we'll try to SSH into Gluster node one. Okay, so it's not gonna bring the environment very well over. That's okay. So, um, So the next thing we're going to do is uh, now now the server can uh, call SSH into the two nodes and create our storage for us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to install the client tools on here. And the client tools, the, the Akedi server and client can be installed on different machines. In this case, I'm doing it on the same machine. Um, but the the client just has to be installed on any computer that you're going to try to allocate, call, call to the API to allocate storage for you. So once we do that, um, there's a flag on the Hecate command line that is always required, and that is the address of the Hecate server. And uh, you can set that as an environment variable. That way you don't have to pass it in on every command line. So we're just going to, um, that's not right. We're going to use localhost 8080. OK. So the first thing to do is to create the cluster. I'm going to create. So this is the CLI tool, Hiketi CLI, cluster create, and I'm gonna just call it my cluster. Okay, so that really, that doesn't do anything except set up a kind of a namespace. So the next thing we do is we wanna add nodes to the cluster. So here we do this command. So we're saying add to this cluster, that ID is right here. And then zones are just a way to tell Hecate about uh, your basically your failure domains and then the management host name and the storage host name which in my case are both the same so if I do that um, it's going to create the a node entry for the cluster and I can do the same thing for my second node okay so now I have two nodes set up the next thing to do is to add devices on those nodes. And so you do that here with uh, Hecate CLI device add, and you this is like the, the name of the device on the node. Um, and this is just raw block storage because it's gonna set up a, um, a volume group, um, an LVM on this block device, and then allocate logical volumes out of that as brick storage for to satisfy allocations that come in. So here, um, this is the ID. The, the device name is the same for both nodes. So I'm going to get the ID of the first node. Um, OK. Ah. OK, hang on just one second. Um, Let's see if this will work. Right. F S A B A B B one. Okay. There. Okay. Yeah. So I just uh, I did this before, and there's a there's a logical volume signature on that block device, even though I've deleted it. It um, it was still there. So this is a little trick. Whenever things complain about. It's like, oh, there's file system signatures or LVM signatures on the block device. WipeFS is your friend. So now that we're back on track, let's do this. And the second node ID is somewhere up here, right here. So we'll do that. We'll add the device successfully. All right, so now we've created our cluster, added nodes to the cluster, and then allocated devices on each node. So now we're, we're ready to actually make the call to allocate uh, allocate space. So that's done with the volume create command, the size parameter that you get, gives you in gigabytes. So you can't actually allocate anything, I think less than four gigabytes actually. Um, 
for, for some reason. I think if I try to do three, I think I did three here earlier, and I think the minimum is four for some reason. So I just did eight. Replicas two, I've only got two nodes. Uh, by default, I think replicas is three, and so that was complaining at me before and that I don't have three nodes, so it can't possibly satisfy three replicas. So if we hit that, it's gonna basically SSH into both nodes, create logical volumes and the volume groups that it had set up on the devices that you initialized here, and then um, put file systems on those, mount those, and then uh, create bricks on each node. And all of that happened just in that one command there. And so this gives you all the information you need to mount your dynamically allocated storage. So here is the um, remote, here's the mount point, uh, not the mount point, but the uh, mount location, you know, the, which you, the first argument in the mount command. And then here's the arguments uh, that you want to pass as options to the mount um, so that in case for whatever reason Gluster node one goes down, it knows what the other Gluster nodes are to contact. So we're going to do that real quick. We mount type Gluster FS with options this. And we're going to mount this at mount. All right. If we go in here, we got our mount point. I can do echo testing into A, cat A. And if we go onto the node here, if we go over var lib hiketty, um, and we can look at the directory structure here, it got, does mounts, and then, um, let's see, there's two of them here. Which one? No, oh, brick A, here we go. Okay, so we'll just go the rest of the way there. So this is the volume group with a uh, with a you know unique ID, the brick with a unique ID, and then the subdirectory brick, um, which is just a, a glusterism. Um, but if we go to that directory, we can see our A file, we can cat that. And um, while the path is different on node two because this ID will be different, um, we can see the same thing because we said replicas um, var lib getty mounts. Nope, it's not that one. Because we said replicas equals two, uh, A gets written to both nodes. So we can cat A here. So that shows. Uh, and the CLI is just um, under the covers calling an API to allocate these things. And so this API can be impl implemented in any application that needs to dynamically provision storage. So um, yeah, that's a, so that's a way you can stack an API on top, on top of Gluster. Hopefully I'll do a next the next video on how to actually integrate that with the dynamic provisioner in Kubernetes and OpenShift.